Hi friends, and welcome to another lesson in the Network Address Translation Operation and Concepts module. In this lesson, we'll be discussing TWICE NAT. Every type of NAT we've done so far has one thing in common. That one thing is that we have translated only the source of the packet in the outbound direction. So let me show that to you. This was our static NAT example. Notice, this was the packet before translation, and this was the packet after translation. Notice in the outbound direction, the only thing that changed is the source of the packet. Here was our static PAT configuration. And again, in both cases, notice the only thing that changed from the pre-translation and post-translation packet is the source. Same thing for this packet in red. The only thing that changed is the source. In both cases, we didn't touch the destination. This was our dynamic PAT. And again, it was the same thing. Host A's source was 106661, and then after translation, it was 328266 with a new port number. The destination that host A selected was unchanged through the translation. All we changed was the source. Even in our policy NAT, we still only changed the source. Notice the source was for host A's packet was 106661. That's what changed on this packet, but the destination of 45.5.4.9 was unchanged. A twice net, then, is actually translating both sides of the packet, both the source and the destination. You're actually doing NAT twice, once on the source of the packet, and then again on the destination of packet, hence twice NAT. The translations are still using the same types of NAT that we've already discussed. So there's nothing new. If you understand how these NATs work, then you understand how the actual translation is being done. The only difference is with a twice NAT, you're doing it twice, once on the source and once on the destination. So let me show you how that works. Here is a topology with an internal host and then a couple of external hosts. Specifically, they are DNS servers. One of them is owned by the corporation you work for, and the other one is a public DNS server that anybody can use. Let's say our host is configured currently to use Google's DNS server as their DNS server. Now let's say, though, you have some sort of policy in place on your corporation that says the users must use your corporate DNS server. Well, one option is to go to every single client and reconfigure the DNS server to use your corporate DNS server IP address. That's an option, but if you have hundreds of clients, that might take forever. Instead, what you can do is translate the packet so that if the source is your internal network and the destination is Google's DNS server, translate it so instead it goes to your corporate DNS server. You would do this by configuring a twice NAT that looked like this. You would say, if the source is 10660-24, which it is, and the destination is 8888, which it is, then translate the source using dynamic path to 328255 and translate the destination to 32918, your corporate DNS server. That would have the effect of translating that packet and in a way redirecting that packet to your corporate DNS servers. This Example shows us that you're changing both the source and the destination. You're doing NAT on the source and then again doing NAT on the destination, hence twice NAT. And then again, you're doing the translations based upon these traditional mechanisms of translating packets that we've already discussed. A twice NAT is simply changing both the source and the destination. When doing twice NAT, you're typically also matching based upon the source and the destination. Therefore, it is also a policy NAT. So what you have here is a policy NAT because you're matching on source and destination and a twice NAT because you're translating the source and the destination. So this example is both. Typically, when you're doing a twice NAT, you are also going to be doing a policy NAT because it doesn't make sense to translate all outbound packets to a specific IP address but it does make sense to translate a specific IP address to another IP address. So that is the definition of a twice NAT. The key takeaway is that a twice NAT is simply doing one of these types of translation 
on both the source and again on the destination. Hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Hey YouTube, want to learn more? Check out the rest of the free network address translation videos. Then, when you're ready to take it a step further, check out these courses which teach you how to configure, verify, and troubleshoot NAT on Cisco routers and firewalls. As always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.